It is 6.20 a.m. and I am in Gamboa, Panama, getting ready to hike Pipeline Road. Why so early? Hear the howlers? Because this is when the animals are moving. That means I'm moving. And I'm fortunate I'm the only one here this morning. And we're going to head right down that road and see what we can find. Now I will say I cheated yesterday. I came yesterday late afternoon and walked the road just so I would know what I was getting into before I came super early in the morning by myself. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what I find because I had some great encounters yesterday in the heat of the day. So this early, we should be good to go. This is my first time doing like the handheld solo cam out on an adventure thing. So hopefully it's not too shaky and let's hope for some amazing wildlife. I'm so excited and I'm super excited that I'm back here by myself. Much better than with tourists. Okay, here we go. Just a few steps into the jungle and it's already getting a little darker, but that'll change as the sun comes up more. I'm now under a tree I saw yesterday. Uh, this one here, which is absolutely stunning. And the sun was behind it yesterday, this white bark and green leaves and open sky and way up here oh listen oh my god this is my happy place way up there yesterday i saw termite mounds and then i zoomed in on those termite mounds because boy they sure were in a weird place and do you see them they're still here a little troop of howler monkeys there were eight in here yesterday right now i see one two three, four. Okay, so I've gone just a little over a mile, a couple of kilometers, and reached kind of a fork in the road. And this fork in the road, oh, there's a woodpecker somewhere. This fork in the road is where the Panama Rainforest Discovery Center is. Now, yesterday when I came back here in the afternoon, normally they're open seven days a week but because of covid they're only open on the weekends right now so i'm not going to be able to go in unfortunately but here is okay so here's the fork in the road and if you go to the left that takes you back into the rainforest discovery center so they have a little visitor center where you pay your ticket it's like 30 dollars if you're a foreigner or 12 dollars if you're a resident and uh, they did say they would take my temporary residency card, which was cool. Um, I spoke with her yesterday and she said that it's no problem though. Like you can't hike back here unless you um, pay. But this continuation here of Pipeline Road, you can, this is no problem. Um, I will say that I didn't see very much coming down. I heard so much more than yesterday. And the only reason I didn't see it, I'm just not trained to see all these birds. This is literally my third time hiking and looking for birds in the last month in my entire life. So I saw the howlers, uh, a goody, uh, Kotamundi crossed my path. Uh, I saw a few birds here and there, I heard a lot of them. Now, so when you get here, there's this awesome sign and it says uh, intensive use zone walk and observation area of biodiversity conservation oh yeah so this I did not walk yesterday because I was here so late so I'm looking forward to exploring down here she said that uh, this is like starting here is primary forest pretty much down this road whereas most of the other I've been hiking through is secondary so there should be more animals let's hope so I haven't walked maybe five minutes from the Y and so you get to this little building there's a gate I have to go read that sign and there's a sign here it's really hard the, it, the maybe it's something like this walk something or another this walk is like dedicated by the James Smithson Society or something. It's hard to, A, it's in Spanish, and B, it's all corroded. Um, it's made possible with thanks through the collaboration with the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, which is right in Gamboa, uh, right next to where I'm staying, but closed because of COVID. 
um, and the conservation group association the national association for the conservation of natural and con natural laser and con i'm not sure what and con is i'll have to look it up uh, oh parque nacional sober ania and this was in 1988 so the year i graduated high school it's aged about as well as i have <laughs> all right oh a goody he just crossed my path and i missed him darn it okay so um i i'm sure i can go this way because the person that was running in the white shirt has been nowhere to be seen which means they haven't come back this direction so either they got dragged off into the jungle by some massive wild animal or you can go this way so let's see what it says um quebrada juan grande is two kilometers the walk to the something oleoducto that must be the pipeline Oh, I think you can walk. You just can't bring pets or bicycles, I guess motorcycles. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go around. This is the most fun kind of adventure when you literally don't even know what you're doing and you're just flying by the seat of your pants. That is the most fun. Ooh, and a nice little stream. Look at that. You could definitely take a dip in there. Oh, I see some fish. Probably hard to see on camera. Let's look at the other side. Look at that. This is so awesome. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, you can totally swim in this end. Little minnows. No gators or snakes. I'd like to see one or two. Okay. So, you know, the sun is coming up more. I, I haven't checked my clock, but if I left at 620, it's probably like 7-ish right now. Um, so we're going to get more daylight, we're going to get more heat. Hopefully as we get a little more daylight, more birds will come out to where I can see them. Alright, let's see what's on this part. There's a little watering hole back here. And I thought, whoa, there's a big fat mud pile too, I can't get any closer. But I thought that as I, uh, as I walked it, by it, that I would get eaten alive by mosquitoes, but there really are none back here. And now yesterday evening there were a few but this morning so far just a couple and not here by this watering hole like how unbelievably cool would it be to see something coming because you can see that there's a path this mud. you can see there's paths back there into the jungle where things come here to drink okay white shirt just passed me going the opposite direction so they've turned around up here somewhere which means now i'm back here all by myself The bird calls are phenomenal. I can hear frogs somewhere too. Another little jungling water hole, except this time with the creek flowing through it. Uh, right back there, maybe 50 yards, something big went crashing off through the jungle. Uh, not a monkey, it sounded more ground level. So possibly a peccary, uh, which is like a wild pig sort of thing. Uh, I did see a really awesome squirrel earlier, but by the time I got the camera, he was gone, which tends to be the case often. I can't be ready all of the time. But so far, this has gone back pretty far. I'm not sure how far, not quite two miles from where I parked. I haven't got the notification of that yet. Let's keep going. Okay, so I'm probably a little over two and a half miles back from where I parked, about a mile and a half back from where the Rainforest Discovery Center was. So Rio Frijolito, 4.1 kilometers. I mean, I don't know if that means it's 4.1 kilometers to Rio Frijolito or what the heck it is. But so here's another bridge. I mean, I thought this would have ended by now. Uh, okay, bridges, not my favorite thing. Sketchy bridges, definitely not my favorite thing. Ugh, makes me nervous. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
I just saw a bird, but by the time I could get the camera up, he was gone. It is a ongoing problem. Oh my God. This bird is high. I have a blog called the middle of nowhere com where no is spelled K-N-O-W and I detail out many of my various adventures on terrifying bridges around the world. Seems everywhere I go there's one. I'm going to go until my phone tells me that I have gone three miles back which should be pretty soon and then I'll come back tomorrow and be more prepared to even go further down into here. Hear the woodpecker. Oh, I wish I could see him. I'm about 2.8 miles back from the car at this point, so uh, almost two miles in from the Rainforest Discovery Center. I have come to this massive mud puddle, and if you look on the other side of that, in there you can see that the road uh, is it doesn't seem like people travel much further than this because it's all grown over whereas you can see the road that I came down is pretty good so I'm gonna try to go up because I really want to hit three miles not a big fan of rubbing my legs up against plants that I don't know what they are in the jungle uh, so we'll see how that goes I might not make it not a big fan of walking through a lot of brush um, with my innocent little bare ankles exposed to every fair to lance in a 10 mile radiance so we'll see if I make it to three I don't have much further to go though like a quarter of a mile another bridge another sign same thing Rio Frijoles 4.6 kilometers I think that this is like more of a mile marker than it is saying how far it is to something so I could be right or wrong about that I don't know. Uh, anyway, we're going to continue over this bridge. It's not as sketch as the last one, which is always nice for my nerves. Still makes me nervous. <laughs> Such a chicken with heights and bridges. Ooh, look at that. I mean, just look at that. I'm back here completely by myself, like no one in sight. No one has been this far this morning at all, that I know. Again, the wildlife is in hiding, but that's okay, because any day in the jungle is the best day ever. Any animals that you see are just icing on the jungle desert. So, I'm going to go just a little bit further, hit that three mile mark, and make a UE. Okay, that's it. I hit three miles in an hour and 46 minutes, which is obviously way longer than it normally takes me if I'm just regular hiking, but lots of stops, lots of looking, lots of listening. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time. So we're at three miles from the car. I'm just past that little bridge uh, that we just talked about. You can see it right there gonna turn around head back to the car that'll be six miles for the morning which would be a nice good hike and then uh, I do I have been formulating a plan for tomorrow so I'll tell you what that is uh, once we get back to the car but here's hoping that we see some more wildlife on the way out because back here the jungle does seem more alive I'm amphibian alert Can you see him little frog so this almost made me scream and pee my pants uh, some big toad not sure what kind possibly a, uh, a a bufo type of a toad it could be that poisonous kind but something let's see if I can get focused on him something definitely got to him I've never seen one. It snorted at me. 
Oh, that was awesome. with the amazing sound of howlers in the background, I have finished today's hike right at six miles. So, saw some amazing things, heard some amazing things. A lot of the wildlife is very elusive, but we're gonna come back and try again. Now, I may come back and hike this evening. My plan for tomorrow, which is my last day, is to actually drive the truck up to the Rainforest Discovery Center and start on that short road and see how far I can get back, see if I can get to the end of that road tomorrow. So that's tomorrow's goal. So we'll see how far I get. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with some of the wildlife that I captured yesterday on my initial exploratory hike between here and the Rainforest Discovery Center. So enjoy. I think from what I saw, possibly capuchins. Yes, here they are. about 3 40 in the afternoon same day as before we're going to try to do a late afternoon hike and see if we can find anything else now this one's going to be a lot shorter we did six miles this morning i'm only going to do two miles uh this evening so uh one mile in and one mile back out so basically just to the rainforest discovery center and back uh, if you look over my shoulder here up there um, you can see where there's this kind of cut through right on the other side of that actually is uh gatun lake where boats pass through to go into the Panama Canal. So it's pretty cool just to drive up here. I just saw a huge ship uh, in, the, in the lake. So it's, it's pretty fun. I mean, just everything around here is super cool. Highly recommended. All right, what else is highly recommended? Wildlife and jungles. So let's go and hopefully I'll have as good of luck uh, this afternoon as I did yesterday afternoon, finding some super cool things. I just saw about five different unbelievable bird species in just one little area. And I'm not even, not even probably a hundred meters in from the parking lot. This is what I experienced yesterday. It seemed like there was more stuff out in the afternoon than there was this morning. So I don't know, but 
there were some pretty amazing birds and I saw my uh, slaty tailed trogon again. So in about the same place as I did yesterday. Here we are on basically day three of our Gamboa adventure. And so today, like I said, I wanted to drive all the way up to the Rainforest Center and save myself that two miles round trip. Although I highly recommend this first two miles round trip if you haven't done it before because I've seen amazing stuff on that stretch. Now what I wanted to do is show you like where I'm parking. So if you look, there's the first guard building. Um, past that sign there's a little building up there um, and this is the first one so this is where like that pipeline split thing is hopefully you can see that and this is where you're going to park if you're going to walk into the rainforest center so uh we're going to drive it though and that'll be a mile in and then we'll start hiking the uh the footpath from there all right who knows we may see something super cool as we drive in Okay, that was a super short drive. Um, not nearly as interesting as walking it, but sometimes we have to cut a little bit off. I have to check out of my Airbnb this morning at 11. Uh, right now it's 6.30. So it took me four hours about yesterday, about three hours and 45 minutes or something like that to do six miles, just because of all the stopping and observing and listening. I'm gonna have to kind of pick up the pace this morning because I, I really need to be back at my Airbnb in about three and a half hours. Um, so, we're gonna go back as far as we can and see if we can figure out where this road ends because I'm really curious to find out. The jungle's alive this morning, lots of birds. So I'm excited to see what's back there. So I've reached two miles back from the Discovery Center. So this is as far as we went yesterday and the signage has changed a bit. Um, now instead of saying Rio Free, Free Cold Place or whatever it was, now it says Rio La Sea, 4.9 kilometers. So what I have learned is that these are definitely mile markers. Where they start from, I don't know if they start from, Rain, I, they don't start from the Rainforest Discovery Center. I, I don't know where they start from. Okay, so we're gonna go like one more mile back. So far I've seen a couple of new bird species, uh, a couple of monkeys, some agouti, um, but it's dark back here this morning. Like the jungle feels a lot heavier this morning than it did yesterday morning. It's very drippy. I mean, it's sunny out, there's no clouds, but it's very drippy and heavy feeling and dark. So it's hard to get pictures. But um, up ahead, looks like we got some sunshine for a minute at least. So let's head that direction. So I've just encountered one of my least favorite things along a trail, especially when I'm over two miles back in a jungle by myself and no cell signal, and it's this. Now you might be thinking, oh, big whoop de deal step right on over that. Well, the problem with things like that is you never really know what's on the other side, and there could be a snake. It's a favorite hiding place for snakes, and the last thing I want to do is be back here and get bitten by something serious like Bothrop's Asper, which is Fairlance. And there's a show called like, I don't remember what it's called, some show, Survivor kind of thing. Um, but they were in Costa Rica and they were trekking and one of the like producers or something stepped over a log 
and on the other side got nailed by a fair to lance. We're gonna do it. So this could go viral if I get like bit. Let's see. <laughs> and someone finds this camera. All right, here we go. So basically what I wanna do is really look hard. Like not just a glance, like really look because these things are so well camouflaged, you would not even believe it. All right, so this side looks good as long as it's not under anything. And then I'm not just gonna step directly over this. I'm gonna step up and take a leap over. All right, so when you encounter stuff like that on the trail, just be smart. I mean, what are the chances there's a fair to lance there or some other nasty snake that wants to bite me? It's probably slim, but why even take the chance? Especially if you're by yourself and help is quite a long ways away. I'm a little over two and a half miles in now, and I have found the answer to my question of where is the end of Pipeline Road? Not that I actually came to it, and not that I will. All right, so I just came to this sign. Uh, this says Rio Limbo, 5.8 kilometers. So again, these are mile markers on these signs. So this is a map of uh, Camino de Oleducto, which is Pipeline Road. Um, let's see. So basically, I started at the bottom of that little green thing right there, Quebrada Juan Grande, and then uh, went across that Rio Friolito, Rio Frijoles, Rio La Seda, and now I'm at Rio Limbo. But look, ha <laughs> ha! Okay, so that little green part is two and a half miles. I don't know how many kilometers that is exactly. Um, yeah, that's a long way back. And so basically it's saying there's another, from here, there's another 3.2 kilometers plus 3.2, so 6.4. Uh, yeah, there's like one, uh, there's six. Seven, eight, nine, uh, 14, 15, 18, 9. I mean, there's like another 19 kilometers to go. Yeah, so I won't be doing that. Um, it looks like it spits out by this lake somewhere. So literally, um, you could go as far as you wanted back here. I mean, you could make it like a full day trip, I guess, if you started early and then got to the end, wherever that is. I don't know. I'll try to do some more research on it and see where we're at. But two and a half miles in, now I found the answer to my question. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around so I can get ready uh, to go to Airbnb, uh, check out my Airbnb. Plus, like I said, it's very heavy back here this morning and dark. Uh, not, I'm not seeing a lot of animals. I don't know what's going on. There's not a cloud in the sky. So off we go to head back. We have found the end of the road and it's nowhere near where we're gonna ever get to from here. So again, I highly recommend this hike. It's amazing. Come in the morning, come in the afternoon, come whenever you can, because you're definitely gonna see wildlife and you're definitely gonna have this very peaceful feeling of being alone in the jungle.